Hi, this is Deadman. If you're watching this video, I assume you're old enough to see gore, violence, swearing, and general adult content. If you aren't old enough, come back with some ID. Or a fake one. <sighs> Responsive tower, do you read? Shit, comms are down. Audio call back to Metal Gear Solid Ground Zero just in case you forgot where you left off. Foreshadowing for the truth? The zoom in on the tape that reads The Man Who Sold the World, then rolling into playing the song, is fantastic. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Yes. Try not to yes. panic. I always found this part hilarious. Like, you tell me I've been in a coma for nine years, and you realistically expect me to not panic? Look at this. The, the fragments are lodged deep within your cerebral cortex. We couldn't give you an MRI, the metal, you see. But even if we were to extract it, you would most likely suffer a brain hemorrhage. This is the perfect time to panic! I know it's difficult, but please look down. It's best to see with your own eyes. Be brave. Can I get a second opinion? Your bedside manner is atrocious. I'm going to change your appearance. We have no other choice. What you look like, however. Getting to do the character creator is a creative excuse for what happens in the ending and making an avatar for Metal Gear Online. Forget everything. Your name. Your past. Man, Quiet's a freaking ninja. And his name is John C. The first person view of quiet choking you out is actually terrifying with your vision blurring and eventually blacking out for a few seconds. Well, that's one way of getting her to quit choking me out. What, what happened to the woman? The woman? I... We gave her a life. She took the short way down. Who are you? Who am I? Talking to yourself. Wow, okay, just completely tell the twist right off the bat then. Well, the good news is you're in the land of the living. Bad news? Oh, well, what you do? This section where you control Venom while his muscles are not working the best certainly makes you feel like you have a handicap. What the hell is that? <laughs> that is a hard no. I told you. There's a Ground Zeroes poster. Do you hear them coming? As far as I'm concerned, that's America's ass. This is a great moment of tension as the soldiers are checking every area, hoping they don't look under the bed. I guess even the almighty big boss gets terrified sometimes. 
And that's how Regina George died. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. I could not even begin to understand the giant flaming whale. But it's awesome, so it gets a win. <laughs> Get on! I'm on your side! I'll slot to the rescue. Okay, the man on fire rides a flaming unicorn. That may be the most metal thing I've ever seen. What, you can't keep up with world affairs in a coma? I still think overall the score was better in Guns of the Patriots, but damn, if there aren't some really good tracks in this one. Yet again, Harry Gregson Williams knocks it out of the park. I especially love this montage of Venom learning to use his prosthetic arm with Donna Burke's vocals in the background. Each mission starts off like a TV show telling you who all the players of the episode will be. Ha! Even the eyewear gets credits. It looks like that uh, horn stuck in your head has impacted the language center of your brain. Sure, that makes sense. I think. The magic words, boss. I've been waiting nine years to hear him. Kept you waiting, huh? Come on. Say for all time's sake. Kept you waiting, huh? Okay then. The skull unit is officially the creepiest thing that Kojima has ever come up with. That is a pretty cool entrance, though. You see this? Diamond Dogs. I seriously love all the Bowie references in The Phantom Pain. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg, and my arm, even my fingers. The body I've lost. Comrades, I've lost. It won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still there. You feel it too, don't you? I'm the one who got caught up with Cypher. A group above nations, even the U.S. And I was the parasite below, feeding off Zero's power. I said it before, and I'll say it again. Robin Atkin Downs is absolutely killing the role as Kaz. Aren't you, Mother Base? I don't know how long it'll take, but I'll make it bigger, better than before. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. I'm already a demon. Heaven's not my kind of place anyway. Start bringing people in. Use this. It's a Fulton recovery device. When you're in the field, use it to extract any soldiers or prisoners you want back here. We'll see if we can't persuade them to join the ranks of Diamond Dogs. One of the greatest things about the Phantom Pain is casually kidnapping people and forcing them to work for you, but, like, it's not a big deal that anybody ever acknowledges. Another thing I really love about the Phantom Pain is all the micromanaging, from putting your new team members into the correct job, to making all of your different weapons, and customizing your buddies, your emblem, and even your base. I know it could break story immersion a little, but I really like the mission-based progression of the story. Your orders are to take him out. With skills like his, it'd be a shame to waste him. But I'll leave the method up to you. With that line, says the entire game. You can go in and be as stealthy as possible, or blow everyone away. The choice is yours. Stop! I'd be lying if I said that the soldiers screaming as they're Fulton into oblivion isn't hilarious.
and like that, the game was over. Honestly, I'm disappointed. It wasn't all that much longer than Ground Zero's. Wait, Skullface doesn't kill him right then and there when he has him in his murder bot's death grip? I take back what I said. He kind of sucks as a villain. I like the smooth transition from launching the game to just being in the game. Didi, come back! Aw, ah, ah. oh, there's the puppy! Aw, oh, the poor baby is even missing an eye just like Snake. The tornado gun has two fun facts. It's Ocelot's revolver, so it ricochets when you shoot it. It's also named after the mocap actor for Ocelot in Metal Gear Solid 3, Tornado Yoshida. While this is an intense sniper duel, it can also be trivialized by dropping boxes on Quiet's head. She's not setting foot on this base. Pretty sure I'm the boss of you, Miller. to the rescue. Quiet is a badass lady. Who are you? Snake? It's not you, is it? Oh, deja vu. The first time you really encounter Sahelanthropus is hella terrifying as you have to sneak around it and try to extract Emmerich. An upright bipedal weapon. In terms of hominids, it's a Sahelanthropus. History lesson from Emmerich? The war industry we started has taken a pretty crooked course these past nine years. With no other option, soldiers have become dogs of war, sent to conflict zones as private forces, or PFs. Guys we fought alongside are dying all around the globe for no reason. But wait, it gets so much worse. Hit it. Go! <laughs> Duh, the goodest of boys has an eye patch just like boss. If that's not a shot worthy of the front cover, I don't know what is. The Gru had a man with that ability in its Cobra unit. Nice callback to Metal Gear Solid 3. Perceptive. Where does she think she's going? You want to head out with the boss? That'll be the day. You're not my supervisor! Here. Hey. Blades. That thing costs a lot of money. I'll say it again. 
Quiet is a badass lady. Never like kids. Especially ones with guns. <clears throat> Rude. Great reflexes. No. He's no natural. Far from it. Even better reflexes from Miller. That's actually doubly impressive because he's missing an arm. This is the reason I love the mission-based structure of this game. You can choose the tools you're taking into combat with you for exactly what you need. Also, being able to choose the right buddy for the job helps. The only downside being once you unlock vehicles in D-Walker, D-Horse doesn't get much use. The legend of Big Boss striking fear into local militants and PMCs is kind of funny when you think about it. It's feeding into the legend, and then they speak of him like he's a boogeyman. It's a variable, multi-legged tank. A spin-off of Metal Gear technology. Big fan of spin-offs, isn't he? That better not be a dig at Ryzen. So you're the so-called White Mamba. Something tells me that's not the name your parents gave you. Mamba translates to snake, so this is a nice setup for Eli being liquid. But to answer your question, no, I highly doubt they did. Also, nice power pose, Eli. The severed pig's head with the conch shell and an army of children is a nice Lord of the Flies reference. Well, if you're gonna have some dude with a shrapnel on his head abscond with you, at the very least, you can strike a dominant power pose. He does excel at that. Is a badass. Stop this now. <laughs> Bosses equal amounts of badass. <laughs> Tell them we took heavy resistance from the renegade platoon and the hostage was killed in the firefight. Also, their leader wouldn't let himself be taken alive. Refusing to kill your targets and instead capture and recruit gives way to some funny excuses from Miller. certainly an interesting way to introduce new type of skulls. 
Everything about this is horrible, and I wish I could go back about a minute when I didn't know this existed. No! No! Uh, 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 wait! Ah, uh. uh, there's the ocelot we know and love. To be perfectly honest, the mess just makes Skullface look ridiculous. I've known you since your time at Langley. I've long been the other side of your coin. 1964, Soviet territory. Fox's first mission. Any mess you made, I was there to clean up. Skullface's backstory is actually pretty solid and a good reason for why he hasn't been mentioned in the series so far. If Big Boss's mission was ultra top secret, then wouldn't the guy falling behind and cleaning up be doubly so? And then there's this. You two are hated enemies, yet you take a 10 minute drive together. What? As much as I crapped on the story ride with the big bad, getting to hear Donna Burke's Sins of the Father play with peace and quiet is something I can't complain about. Who is doing this? Such a lust for revenge? Who? Okay, I do have to give props to James Horan for committing to Skullface as hard as he did. Unleash that thirst unto the future! Major... I'm burning up! Just gonna throw another win for Skullface's overacting. The fight with Sahelanthropus is definitely tense. You'll have to use everything in your arsenal and then some to bring it down. Also an interesting note to make of this, the reason that Rex was put into production instead of Sahelanthropus is the cost of making it, and the fact that it was big and unwieldy, and the cockpit being too small for an adult. God damn it, Huey. You ruin everything. Honestly, the wonky vehicle controls are the best. It makes for some of the most entertaining gameplay when you aren't trying to be serious.
as cool as the battle gear is, it's a shame we never get to use it in battle. Boss, about that AI pod you retrieved from Emmerich's research facility, guess what we found inside? A corpse. Human. The pod maintained a low internal temperature the whole time, and very little outside air got in. That would have slowed down decomposition. Still, the remains were mostly skeletal. Estimated time of death is between six months and a year ago. We put the screws to Huey about it. Listen to the tape. Turns out it was the body of someone we knew very well. This is exactly why I have a problem with Huey. He used Hal in a Metal Gear experiment. Strange Love obviously had a problem with that. And he killed her for it. Also, he betrayed Mother Base nine years ago. Refreshing? Salt water. No! She'll die. His life isn't yours to take. Enough. When Ocelot has to step in, you know your torture is rough. Now nah, get them dish. Let's not get them tea. Oh. Idiki black anat e. あ、ここで死してしに。で、ザ。メラガナ、ゲスネタ。カトベヤステタ。アシエイト This is powerful. Boss has such an influence on everyone he comes into contact, he turns enemies into allies. Quiet was originally sent to kill him, but instead she has fallen in love and refuses to speak English, as to not hurt the boss and his comrades. Ready to face the world as enemies. <laughs> <laughs> no! I don't need you anymore. Really, an accident? Or did Eli just rig it to stir up the boys? Either way, he had to have been planning for this all along. Bidding farewell to the world. Seeing this really makes me pissed the game is unfinished. It leaves so many unanswered questions on top of wanting to go and get my damn Metal Gear back. It's the little things, like being able to set Maneater as your helicopter music that makes this game so much fun to play. We've got another parasite outbreak in the laboratory on the quarantine platform.
What is this? No idea. Damn it! What the? Shit! It was at this point that I realized if Silent Hills had come to fruition, it would have been amazing. Because this scene is straight out of a horror movie. All throughout the mission, staff members of Diamond Dogs die, especially when they're pleading with you or just wanting to leave and you can't let them lest they infect the rest of the crew. It's just so tragic. I win. I'm no snail. What he means by this is he's not infected. The idea is similar to Cordyceps fungus in The Last of Us. The in real life Cordyceps will make the ants and other insects go get eaten. The snail is referenced in one of the cassettes where snails infected by the vocal parasites would emit a sweet scent so that birds would go and eat them and spread the virus. Having to go through your base and execute your fellow soldiers has to be one of the worst things to experience. But damn is it powerful. You yourself said we were a family! Huey being a crybaby about having to put down literal infected makes me think he'd be crying about my freedoms in 2020. The amount of dedication of your soldiers is astounding. I, I don't think I made it after all. What? You just checked him. Could it have progressed this quickly? Boss, take another look at him with the goggles. This is the final nail in the tragic coffin. You think you are going to get at least one person out, but end up having to put him down anyway. The shift of Boss looking normal, changing to his demon look is symbolic as hell, as he feels like he's a monster for what he's done. Even though he'd helped stop the spread of something terrible, he still had to put down his own men. It's your fault! They're dead because of you! What? He's right. I killed him with my own hands. They were on your side! I'm on your side! And you turned them all to ashes! <sighs> Can we just fucking throw him overboard already? I won't scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. I will always be with you. Plant your roots in me. Okay, admittedly, it is a little gross, but the dedication Boss has to his men is astounding and should be commended. We're not burying them at sea. What then? We'll make diamonds from their ashes. Take them into battle with us. 
I really love this idea. It's a sweet idea when you think about it. As Boss said, it would be heartless just to throw them to the sea, especially considering how loyal the soldiers of Diamond Dogs are. To top it off, they have the diamond shining in the Diamond Dogs logo from now on. All I could do was obsess over revenge, doubting my comrades along the way. But even after all we've accomplished, the phantom pain never let up. If anything, it just got worse. But you understood that from the start, didn't you? From the moment you opened your eyes in that hospital, you knew it wouldn't go away. Yet you've been fighting the pain and confronting your phantoms the whole time. Knowing full well the battle would never end, not till the day you die. I respect that now, more than ever. It's an honor and a privilege, Big Boss. It's almost like revenge doesn't actually solve anything and will actually just continue the cycle. Wait, am I having deja vu? The prosecution calls a witness. <laughs> Love's gravestone, haunted by her phantom. It's just a machine. Huey! Damn it, Huey! Open it now! Please! Let me out! Kill me! Kill me. It recorded it all. Everything. Everything you did living together. That's some pretty damning evidence. This scene shows off Quiet's playful side, while showing how far her and Boss have come and that they really care for each other. Great attention to detail with Quiet struggling to breathe and move since she is fully clothed and probably suffocating.
I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but Quiet is a badass! <laughs> Quiet to the rescue! is a resourceful badass. Quiet. The boss is with me. Here comes the most tragic part of the whole game. Quiet loves the boss so much she chooses to speak English to save his life, even though she won't be able to be around anymore. Hence the mission name, A Quiet Exit. There you are, Ahab. Visual confirmed. Peacock, hurry! This way! Jordan! I didn't know you could be so talkative, Quiet! This is the most sensitive part of the game, and now's not the time for jokes! I did not choose to be quiet. I wanted to express my feelings to you. If only we shared a common tongue. Vengeance was what drove me to them. The only language left to me, revenge. But the words we shared, no, that was no language at all. That is why I chose the language of gratitude instead and go back to silence. I am quiet. The absence of words. I'm not crying, you're crying. Don't you die on me, damn it. He be dropping. Intubate. Now. Cardiac arrest, he's in BFIP. No response. Hit him again. Clear. How's he doing? Well, he stabilized, but it took too long. He's in a coma. What about him? He, uh, took some shrapnel. To the head. What a twist! I will say off the bat, playing through the entire intro mission again with all the slow pacing sucks ass. 
So it turns out the character creator at the beginning was your actual face as the medic that was in the chopper with Boss nine years ago. Now this one, he'll take your place. From here on, he's Snake. He believes it too. My very own Phantom, huh? Funny how Ocelot is saying he believes it too. They gave Venom hypnotherapy to make him believe he was boss, just as he would years later assume the identity of Liquid to bring down the Patriots. No time for anesthetic. We have to open her now. Do you remember who you are, what you were meant to do? I cheated death thanks to you. And thanks to you, I've left my mark. You have to. You've written your own history. You're your own man. I'm Big Boss. And you are too. No. He's the two of us together. Where we are today, we built it. This story, this legend, it's ours. We can change the world and with it the future. I am you and you are me. Carry that with you wherever you go. Thank you, my friend. From here on out, you're a big boss. I cannot put into words why I love this ending so much. The best I can come up with is the music. It's triumphant and sounding like a villain's at the same time. I do actually like that it ties into the original Metal Gear 1 and 2 with the whole being two bosses situation. Plus, I really like the whole punching in the mirror accented with the music. The Phantom Pain was interesting. There's a lot of controversy and things surrounding the game that I'm not going to talk about, but everything happening did impact the game in ways. It's definitely not completely finished, even if they did close a lot of story threads. I actually learned that Metal Gear Solid 5 was supposed to be a soft reboot, which sort of makes sense, 
I feel this game is actually closer to Death Stranding rather than any other Metal Gear game, but I had a blast playing it nonetheless. The great thing about this is you can actually just jump in with minimal knowledge of the series, still pick up on most everything, and just have fun with the vast open world of the game. Honestly, you can spend the majority of the time in the field tinkering with many options your R&D gives you. Gameplay is the best it's ever been with multiple ways to handle stealth scenarios. So you can get a sniper rifle and pick them off from far away, or you can sneak in and choke everybody out, or sneak in and pistol everybody, or sneak in with an assault weapon, or you can just go full blast and rockets everywhere and grenades everywhere. And there's a whole bunch of small stuff. There's honestly way too many to list, but two things that come to mind is the rocket fist, where you can actually have an explosive one or a non-lethal one uh, that just basically punches them out. Um, and you can have things like that, just, you know, small little tweaks that definitely makes the gameplay better. Um, you know, you wouldn't think going off the bat, oh yeah, I totally can use this prosthetic to fire her rocket hand, and you're just gonna go in first thinking it's just a prosthetic, it's basically a way that you have two hands. Nope, you can shoot your fist at people. And then the other little thing that I can think of off the top of my head is the inflatable dummies, where when you level them up enough, they get a little audio speaker, and they repeat, you know, two of the callback phrases, the kept you waiting, huh, and you're pretty good. And then it becomes especially funny when you set up like eight of them in a row and just set them off line on line and then it's just over and over kept you waiting, huh? And you're pretty good all down the line. And the voice acting was very good. Everybody killed it in their role. And even the few lines that Stephanie Houston had, she did them very well. Um, and, and like I said with Ground Zeroes, I think Kiefer Sutherland did a very good job with Boss. Um, and it, it kind of does make sense because technically it's not boss it's it's a doppelganger so you probably wouldn't sound exactly like it and I, I know that doesn't really float for ground zeros because that actually was boss but you know in a sense like i said in there if you don't think about it too hard it, it's not that bad micromanaging has vastly improved from peace walker it's a little bit more clear on how to do things because it actually gives you some extra tutorials um and, you know, it's easier to just navigate through that kind of stuff. Plus, you can navigate through it in the field, and it's like, okay, we don't have to do five missions to get this done. It's like, oh, no, you, you have a timer on it. So if you have a timer on it for 20 minutes, all you have to do is play the game for 20 minutes, and boom, it's done. Bob's your uncle, and you can move on to the next project. Overall, the story was okay. The story, I, I kind of feel like it has the same problem as Breath of the Wild. It was a pretty decent story it was just not told very well most of the story is locked behind cassette tapes which you see i didn't do much of the cassette tapes there's a whole huge reason on why i didn't go down that um but most of the story is locked behind the cassette tapes and even some of the funnier moments like miller and code talker talking about how to make the best hamburgers or what's the best hamburgers just little things like that uh, are hidden behind the tapes, and it's kind of a shame that you don't actually get to see some of these interactions between these characters, you just have to hear about them. Which is still not overtly terrible, but it's something I do wish I could have seen a little bit more. Uh, the fast travel is bad. This is actually coming off more... Whenever I played this for the channel, I had already platinumed the game a couple of years back. So, you know, I played the absolute crap out of this game. And one thing I noticed that was really bad was the fast travel. There are implementations for fast travel. You can, at any major outpost, you can, you know, stick, uh, as long as the, the base isn't on alert, you can put yourself in a box and you can ship yourself to a different location. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're like, need to go someplace, you can't just go. You have to either grab a vehicle, spend 10 minutes getting to that place, or uh, just do the menu and grab yourself out to the ACC. Something that I think they should have done is uh, do like you can with Mother Base. With Mother Base, as soon as you chop off the chopper, you have an option of leaving and you have an option of moving to a different platform. They should have had that out in the field. It would have it probably would have cost some some more resources, but it would have been you. They could have done it with significantly less resources than what uh, what it would have cost to just go 
back to uh, the ACC or back to Mother Base. You could have just had the chopper fly around and then you could have boop, boop, and gone to the next thing. And I also think that would have gatten some more use out of the Gatling gun that was attached to it. As it is, I don't think I ever used the Gatling gun except for like maybe one time with where it's like scripted that you need to use it. I, I don't think it's like scripted, but it's the really the only thing you can do. You grab your Gatling gun and you shoot Solanthropus after you rescue Huey. Um, that's like the only real you should get out of it. The only other times I used it was when uh, I was mostly just dicking around. Um, you know, just going in and doing a side ops and not really caring if I, like, alert anybody because I don't have a score to keep track of or anything like that. So the fast travel could have been implemented better, especially, like I said, since they already had the framework for it. They, and, you know, you could have easily gone from one side of the map to the other. So say you're at the um, the, the palace that's on, like, the, uh, the westernmost side of uh, the Middle East, and then you could have gone to OKB Zero in, you know, not even very long. I don't think it would be that hard to just have the helicopter fly there. And you can even do it in real time as it would take for the helicopter to fly there. You know, you could you could make it a couple of minutes, but that would be a couple of minutes that you could spend, you know, catching up on your micromanaging, looking over any files you might want to look over, listen to any cassette tapes you want to listen over. There is there is honestly enough micromanaging stuff to do that that could have still been a viable fast travel option. Um, another thing is the, there is an option for assault, but most of the time you feel like a glass cannon. So why would you bother? So they give you the option for assault, but even when you're wearing your, uh, your battle dress, you still take a lot of fucking damage. Uh, even when you're wearing your battle dress, you still take a lot of damage. It seems like they give you the option for assault but it's not very viable, so why would they have bothered in the first place? And I get it, this is one of those things where you want the player to choose their own playstyle, but you should have made the assault style a little bit more viable, I think. I mean, if you know what you're doing, you could mostly still be assault and sneak around with a, you know, silence gun or hell, even if you're going loud, um, you know, you can just use reflex mode and just pop up whenever you need it. And there's too much radio chatter. Honestly, there is way too much radio chatter. Um, so even if you're just doing side ops and around in the field, there's radio chatter constantly. Miller saying you're gonna bring him to base or just cut the, these little comments. And the only reason that it's actually like bad is when you're trying to listen to cassette tapes. So one of the better things to do, to, since there's so many cassette tapes, and that's how the majority of the story's told, it's best, like, especially if you're sneaking in on a mission, it's best to play one of the cassette tapes and just kind of listen to it as you're trying to sneak in. Or even just as you're driving around the field. The way that the radio chatter works in here is it, it, it does a soft mute, where it doesn't completely shut the volume down and doesn't pause it so like it still goes even as Miller's talking um, you know I wish there was at least an option to turn that off um, do like a do like an optional codec thing you know if Miller wants to talk you just push a button it'll pause whatever you're listening to Miller will do his spiel or ocelot uh, and then it'll go right back to your tape afterwards instead of doing a soft mute so you still kind of barely hear your tape in the background but Miller and Ocelot are just continuing to chat and that's kind of distracting um, and the side ops uh, like I said I did a platinum run for this game a while back and one thing that I thought was really bad was the side ops or at least how it was handled so the side ops you could do I think like up to five or six just depending on the area um, a lot of the times you would end up having repeats, which, you know, that's fine. But the bad thing was, is like, once you were done with all the side ops in your area, you had to go back to your ACC and then go back. So not only is that a waste of your resources, that's also a waste of your time, too, because it's got to do the little helicopter cutscene every time, and it's got to do this. So, like, going back and forth, I can't even tell you how much time I wasted there. It was probably... You know, each helicopter ride is probably at least a couple of minutes added on. So that kind of adds up and 
it's like I spent all this time and you got to go through a loading screen too. Um, not even just waiting for the helicopter to actually get there. You have to go through a loading screen. So that could have been implemented better, you know, even if it's just like, hey, use your phantom cigar, which would have also given it some more use. Uh, use your phantom cigar and just wait for a day to pass and then they'll all pop right back in. Or the next ones will pop back up as well, so you can just stay in the field and keep going. And I know it's supposed to be a thing where, like, boss, you're not supposed to stay out in the field for that long. But, like, you can always go back to my base and take a shower. And you get a funny cutscene with it, so it's a win-win all around. Uh, so in closing, overall, it was not a bad game at all. It was actually very good. The stealth on it was... it was utterly phenomenal. Um, it took what Metal Gear Solid 4 did... Um, it actually kind of dumbed it down and it improved it at the same time, but it was very well done and I would actually love to see more things in the Fox engine. Sadly, I don't think we're ever going to get that, but it's pipe dream. You can always wish for it. Um, the, the Fox engine is done fantastically well. I still stand by what I said on my ground zeros. I think most of the time if I'm just messing around, I would much rather play Ground Zeroes because it is shorter and it is more compact. Um, like I said, that kind of goes with the whole open world problem. Um, but uh, all in all, it's still an incredibly well done game, and I would also highly recommend everyone to play it. Um, if not for the story, because I, I get it. I mean, even as far as Metal Gear stories goes, it's a little complicated, it's a little insane, and sometimes it, it can just kind of drone on forever um that was actually another thing i didn't really add in the con category but it kind of is so there's a lot of cinematic cutscenes, which isn't a problem in and of itself but sometimes they spend so much trying to set up a nice establishing shot that it just takes too long to get to the point um but that's that's about it for the review of this it all in all is a fantastic game would definitely recommend playing it. Um, I'd actually even recommend Platinum running it. This is e even though it it can drag on sometimes, and like I said, with the with the problems of the uh, the side ops and everything just taking forever to load in, it's still a very fun game. It's fun to try to push yourself to get that hundred percent and to get all the little side objectives. It, it was a fun game overall, and I just I I could not get enough of it. Um, right now, I, I think I've had my fill of it, just because I played it as much as I did. But, uh, for anyone who hasn't played the, the full game as much, um, or hasn't even tried it at all, definitely give it a try. It's, it's a very fun game and would recommend.